हेलो एवरीवन इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विद द टॉपिक ऑफ प्रोसेस मैनेजमेंट इन ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम सो वी आर गोइंग टू सी डिफरेंट टॉपिक्स ऑफ प्रोसेस मैनेजमेंट लाइक प्रोसेस स्टेट डायग्राम प्रोसेस कंट्रोल ब्लॉक प्रोसेस स्विचिंग देन डिफरेंट सर्विसेज ऑफ ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम फॉर प्रोसेस मैनेजमेंट लाइक प्रोसेस क्रिएशन एंड सो ऑन सो वी आर गोइंग टू कवर दीज टॉपिक्स इन डिफरेंट वीडियोज इन टूडेज वीडियो we are going to see about the basics of process then the process state transition diagram or it is also called as process state diagram and this is important because in the theory exams the question comes from process state transition diagram often so now what is a process process is a program in execution we have two entities in any operating system one is a process and one is program so we can define a process as a program which is Uh, which is uh, which is executing or running in the system so process is also defined as the smallest unit of work which is individually scheduled by the operating system since operating system schedule different works uh, for the cpu to execute so process is one of the smallest unit of the smallest unit of work which is scheduled by the operating system now If a process is a program in execution, then what is the difference between a process and a program? So we can define it as a program a passive entity, whereas process is a active entity. So if we take a uh, a example or a program, suppose the program is like this. We have simply a main function. Then in this main function, we have defined certain variable like i. and j and we are executing a loop in which we are making the loop to run 10 times and in the loop we are incrementing the value of j by each iteration of i so what is this initially this is a program in the program the multiplication or uh, the addition statement which is j equals to j plus i is a single statement so that is a passive entity which in which we have defined these many programs codes and this is known as the pro program but when this program executes then this particular statement will run how many times up till this loop that is 10 times so that means whenever this program is running then this becomes an active entity and that is known as the process so one of the uh, benefits of process is that if you have a uh, program suppose a mail program a mail program is there so in the case of multi user system same program can be executed by different users and each time a program will run its own process a different process will be run for each user so in this here you can write for each user different process of mail program will be executed so that is one of the main advantages of using process that you can have a single program that can be shared by many users so that is the main difference between a process and a program that process is a active <laughs> entity whereas program is a passive entity now let's see the process state transition diagram that how a process is actually created and what are the different states by which a process goes through before getting terminated so initially whenever a new process is created the process is in new state so we will define that state with the keyword new so that is the first stage whenever a process is created now when the process <coughs> is created that process needs to be executed by the cpu so we can say that the process is admitted to the queue for the execution <clears throat> so the process goes from new to ready state that the process is ready to be executed but waiting for the cpu allocation then once the scheduler select the process 
the process goes to the running state from the ready because the process is now running by the scheduler so this is your running state and here you can write different task that is happening that from admitted it is admitted to the queue so it becomes ready then if the process is picked by the scheduler from the ready state then it goes to the running state so that is now if a running process is interrupted due to some reason then the process again goes to the ready state so that is your interruption now interruption can be of many type like a process needs some file or resource to be allocated before completion and the process is waiting for that particular resource so that can also be an interruption so that is a uh, interrupted state then from running the process can also enter into the waiting state where a process is still running but waiting for some resources so the process can be go to the waiting state and on completion of the waiting task like for example a process is waiting from for some io device like printer to be available and if the printer is made available then the process goes again in the ready state so this is like this here the process is waiting so you can write io or event wait and when it is going from waiting to ready <coughs> the io or event is <coughs> completed so up till now the process is in execution mode <coughs> now when the process complete its work it has to be terminated and that goes from running to the terminated state with the command or the process which is known as exit so here process gets terminated and the system call or the process is exit so that is the basic of your process state transition diagram here you can write some of the points about new ready waiting running and terminated state so i am pausing the video and uh, i will write some points and then come back to the video where you can note that particular points so these are the points that you can note down that in the new state the process is created in the ready the process is waiting to be assigned to a processor in the running the process is executing the instructions in waiting state the process is waiting or blocked for some event to occur like uh, demand of some reception of signal or the uh, availability of some file in the terminated the execution is finished so this is your process state transition diagram and this particular topic is important because a question normally comes about the process state transition diagram that explain process state transition diagram with the help of in diagram so in that question you can draw this diagram and explain the working of each state in separate paragraph thank you for watching the video in the next video we are going to discuss about the process control block that is pcb and different modes of execution of a process thank you for watching the video please subscribe to my youtube channel for more such tutorials thank you